All right, uh, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise to Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, excuse me if I pause in between my words. I am out here walking in the cold, so uh, just in case you were wondering, that's the reason why. Um, anyway, I wanted to get into a controversial topic um, that I've seen a certain amount of people, you know, talk about. So I just wanted to, you know, share my thoughts on it and how I, you know, personally, you know, view it. Um, you know, it might be different than uh, than how you view it. Right, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, learning other people's views of things, you know, is always beneficial because then you can, you know, uh, match your own views up against it and see, you know, where you still believe what you believe or if you change your mind. Um, always a good thing for all of us. Anyway, um, gold and silver and SHTF. What are the pros and the cons. Well, um, I of course uh, want to start off with saying this, is that, um, you know, in a SHGF, you know, situation, the number one, you know, barter or uh, substance of trade is, um, of course, you know, food and water. Okay, so we had to, for of course, you know, understand that first before we, um, you know, try to, you know, uh, get into, you know, gold and the silver. Because, um, that's strange. There's a car just watching me. Hey, you always gotta, you always gotta be on alert, man. You always gotta be on alert, but that's video for another time. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying, was that, you know, in SHDF, of course, the first, you know, substance of trade is, uh, is food and water. Another one will be, you know, light sources, such as, you know, matches, you know, stuff like that, you know, alcohol, but of course, Gold and silver do have their their place, which is what we're here to speak about today. Um, now, let me say, for example, you know, I have uh, I myself have some uh, you know silver. You know, as the horse said, of, you know, Apostle GMS, that you know, silver is the uh, you know the poor man's gold, which is true, right? Um, and I bought it when I was a little high. I paid about thirty an ounce for it. Yeah, thirty dollars an ounce because the guy wanted like three dollars, two dollars over spot for it. Um, now I guess we could call it premium um, for the coin. So I ended up paying thirty dollars each. And the reason I did that is I know that uh, that that is you know seems a little much, but even today, you know, the coins, silver, you know, one ounce coins are uh, exactly. I believe 27 or 28 yeah 27 or 28 dollars as of uh october 27th 2020 i bought mine probably about three months ago so it was like you know 29 i believe it was even 30 dollars so you know i did buy it it was a little high but you know with that being said you know i know that um you know, it always will, you know, keep its value. But it never is going to lose its, uh, its value. And that's how you got to look at it. Okay, it's a substance that will never lose its metal worth. It will always be worth something. Okay, and that's the, uh, the main, uh, you know, thing that you got to look at when it comes to silver. However, in a, you know, SHDF, scenario you know people I, mean, I would think i would think you know mass majority of people would you know turn down you know an offer of gold and silver 
or I should say gold or silver, simply because, you know, as everybody says, well, you can't eat it, which is true. However, you know, always uh, is worth value, valuable, very valuable, simply because of, uh, you know, the metal that it is. All right, so you got to remember that. It's the way I like to look at it. All right, so, of course, eventually, now let's say if we're four months in, five months in, to, you know, the, uh, you know, collapse SHTF, sooner or later, you know, people will, uh, you know, accept, you know, gold or silver. I would say mainly silver because, um, the reason I don't get gold, for one, I don't have the money. Second of all, even if I did, I would still not really buy it. You know why? Let's say I want to make a purchase from somebody in a grid down scenario. But I have a gold coin or I have four silver coins. Okay? But the thing I'm offering is only worth the four, you know, silver coins. Okay? Or say five silver coins. It's not worth, you know, the one gold. But you know what? If I didn't have the silver, I'd have to trade the gold, which I lose, you know, possibly thousands, if not hundreds of dollars, depending on the, uh, you know, the, the thing that, uh, you know, it's being purchased. And that's just the way you gotta, you know, look at these things. All right, another thing as well, is you'll have um, something called a, uh, we also know about this, but uh, they call it a junk silver, a constitutional uh, silver, which basically is, um, you know, quarters from uh, 19, uh, it was 1964, I believe, and, you know, on back uh, the dimes, 1964, uh, let's see, was it nickel? Uh, 1942 on back well I mean 1942 to 1945 is the um they call it wartime uh, silver okay and you can look into them if you don't know about it but they're um they got silver inside of them okay uh so I purchased probably about a hundred bucks worth of it probably last month you know, just to have that on hand. As you know, it might come a situation where you want to trade. Um, but the thing that you want is not worth a full ounce of silver. So by having, you know, these little amounts of silver on hand is going to be very valuable. However, there is a flip side to it, or I should say a con. All right, a con is that a lot of people don't know it, they're actually silver. So you might have a hard time trying to trade one of them, say, uh, you know, 1963, you know, quarter with somebody, because you tell them it's 90% silver, but they might not know that. And even if you somewhat proved it to them, they still might not believe it. Okay, so you have to, you know, take all this into consideration. Or you have to take all of this into consideration. That's just the way you gotta look at it. All right, um, not gonna keep this going too much longer. Um, but as far as gold, as I said, I just personally don't see gold as being a very good, you know, barter item in that situation. I've already explained why. I'll say it again. If I wanna buy something of low value, say if I wanna trade, you know, something for say a pallet of food, but it's not worth the gold coin then having silver will be more beneficial to be easier to trade with if you get what I'm saying all right and even if we're in such a scenario you know people might not be willing to accept precious metals for their physical goods simply because um you know in that point in time you know the goods are worth more than the gold and silver and that's even a prophecy in the Bible as well. That's in the book of Ezra. It says, um, they shall cast their gold and silver in the streets. All right, now the paraphrasing. Because I was dealing with, you know, the time of, uh, 
time of trouble. Okay, and you can read about that. It's in the book of, you know, Ezra's in the Apocrypha. Um, but you know what? Having gold and silver is always, you know, a, a smart move. However, you know, my advice would be to stick with silver. Okay, but then watch the amount that you get. Because right now it's not worth, you know, stacking $10,000 worth. It's worth stacking, you know, $10,000 worth of goods for the next few years. That's what you should put your money towards right now. Not necessarily precious metals. However, it of course needs to be said that precious metals do have their place. Alright? So I will say that. Um, you know, you can feel free to share your comments down below. You know, you can tell me why you agree or disagree. And when we can... You know, have a conversation about it. Um, but anyway, I want to say shalom.